Now that's good history. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Ah, good to see you. Good to be back. Oh, man. Definitely need a beer. Definitely need a beer. I can help with that, definitely. All right. Let's ask you a question. You ever been on a Saturday morning? And someone knocks at your door and you just answer in your pajamas or slippers? Yeah, a few times. Now, what would you think that the President of the United States did that? <laughs> I'd probably call Fox News. So, don't you have a pet? As a matter of fact, I have a dog. What would I tell you if there was a certain President who actually had a mockingbird as well as two bear cubs? He has a teddy bear. Does that count? Now, what if... Now, your personal library at home, what would you say that's like? <laughs> Not much of a library when it comes to books. I got a good Netflix collection, though. So, what would you say if your Netflix collection was the cornerstone of the Library of Congress? I might have to subscribe to Disney Plus for that. Netflix ain't that good. You, you in the back. Come on over here. Grab a bar stool. Grab your favorite beverage. I have someone's story to tell you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to A Toast to History. My honoree of the day is Thomas Jefferson on his birthday. Third President of the United States. We all know he wrote the Declaration of Independence. I'm here to tell you what you don't know about Thomas Jefferson. So gather round, and let's toast some history. Thomas Jefferson was born on April 13, 1743, on a Virginia plantation. He's the third president of the United States. He was the second vice president of the U.S. He was the first ever secretary of state. He was the first U.S. minister to France. He was a delegate of Virginia to the Congress of the Confederation. He was second governor of Virginia, and he was also a delegate of the Continental Congress. Now, Thomas Jefferson is what we call a Renaissance man, a person with many talents or areas of knowledge. He was very highly educated. He studied for 15 hours a day with violin practice. He spoke four different languages, English, Italian, French, and Latin. He read two other languages, Greek and Spanish. He got a law degree from the University of William and Mary. Two years later, he's elected to the House of Burgesses, which is a governing body of the Virginia colony underneath the king. He was a co-founder of Virginia University. Tom, you're a cavalier. Woo! He's a part-time archaeologist inventor, and a connoisseur of wine before wine was a really big thing. We have a lot of connoisseurs out there today who love their wine. Back then, people liked wine, but it wasn't a thing. He actually also sold his wine. You were a real true hipster of wine, weren't you? You and your wine, your opium. I'd party with you, Tom. Okay, Washington is president number one. He steps down. He's like, I don't want to do it anymore. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson run against each other, and John Adams wins. Washington throws the keys at him, good luck, John, and takes off. Now, John Adams has four years. Now, he's the same man that you all read about as the revolutionist. He's the same guy, and he was a great revolutionist, but as a president, he didn't have the people skills that really made him a great person who was re relatable to he loses the election to Thomas Jefferson in round two. So, he feels backstabbed by this. He's very upset. He feels he was betrayed by the American people who put him in there. So, he leaves the night before. He's out of Dodge. He packs up and is gone before the morning. So, it's an easy transfer of power because he was not there. It's one of the few in the world where there was an easy transfer of power that's what we've always prided ourselves on throughout the centuries. Jefferson is president now. He's the first person who was inaugurated in Washington, D.C. in the White House because the White House was not built 
when Washington was around. It was being built during the second half of Adams' administration. They were in Philadelphia. So this was him in Washington, D.C. during the first inauguration. Now, Tom Jefferson was a widower, so he was a bachelor while he was in the White House. He did have a couple daughters who acted with the First Lady duties. He observed two major holidays while in the White House. He did New Year's Day and, of course, the 4th of July. I wonder why that was close to his heart. Kind of a big deal, huh, Tom? Kind of a big deal? His biggest accomplishment while being president was the Louisiana Purchase. Napoleon has 830,000 square miles of land right next to the United States. He's at war with England. The only way you can beat England, since they're island, is you've got to have a powerful navy if you're going to do it. He does not have a powerful navy. He needs the money to get one. So he offers this property for $22 million to Thomas Jefferson in the United States. Thomas Jefferson says, I'll give you 15 for it. Napoleon says, deal. And he sells the land to the United States. And overnight, Thomas Jefferson has doubled the land of the United States. Now, is this legal? If Thomas Jefferson was probably being honest with himself and reading the Constitution, he'd probably say, no, it was not. But he saw a great opportunity. And he took it. But what a lot of people give him a flack on, he uses the money from the bank system that Alexander Hamilton established that 10 years ago he was tearing down that it was not against, it was against states' rights, it was not very good, and it showed an overstepping of government power. And he uses that to buy his property. It's kind of like, in, you know, Tom, um, um, whatever. So, some people give him flack for this. Hey, was it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? We can all talk about that amongst ourselves. But I feel it was a good thing. It really doubled the United size of the United States. It gave us access to a lot of waterways. The Lewis and Clark Expedition saw what wonders this could bring in. And hey, was it legal? Who knows? But sometimes you got to crack a few eggs to make a good omelet. Now, let me get this straight, Tom. If I did my math right, and I did take off my shoes to help, that would mean I begin an acre of land for less than a dollar. Think you can break a 20 for me? The nice way to put it was Thomas Jefferson was a very eccentric man. He's actually very quiet and shy and soft-spoken. During his inaugural address, they said you could barely hear him because he tried to make sure every word was right because he was a perfectionist. He wrote everything. That's how he did his thing. He wrote the Declaration of Independence, the Statute of Religious Freedom for Virginia, most of his work for the University of Virginia. He wrote it down. He did not say it out loud. Most of his correspondence with Congress was he would write to them. He would not go and address them. He also dressed very relaxed. He felt he identified with the common man. Now, he was in a mansion in Monticello, in one of the biggest homes in the United States. He was one of the richest men in the United States. He was not a common man, but he felt he was a fighter and he was a protector of these common men. So he would dress relaxed. He would not ride in the carriage like Washington and Adams would. He would ride his horse everywhere he went. If you knocked on the White House door, Jefferson might actually answer and be in his robe and slippers. Hey, John, come on in. This was the man that he was. Even though he was not a common man, he was a protector of the common man. I hear you have a retreat house in Williamsburg, Virginia. You have Monticello, the bi one of the biggest homes in the United States. You have a mansion and a plantation. What are you retreating from? Some other facts that you do not know about Thomas Jefferson. A lot of us have pets. A lot of us enjoy our pets. 
I have two dogs and two kitties. I've had gerbils, hamsters, um, uh, lizards. I've had a lot of pets in my house. But this man decided he was a bird lover. Renaissance man, he liked birds. This man had four mockingbirds in the White House. His favorite was named Dick. And Dick used to sit on his shoulder as he would write out documents while in the White House. Dick would sing as he played the violin. And he was enthralled with these birds. The White House staff was not. Feeding these birds, taking care of these birds, clean up the remnants of these birds were not a fan of the White House staff. So therefore, when he finally gets voted out of office, you can say they gave him the bird. You got to take these guys home. And he takes them back to Monticello. Like, no, no, we're, we're not having these birds anymore. Glad you had fun, Tom, but it comes to an end today. Talking about pets that Thomas Jefferson had. He had two bear cubs given to him by Lewis and Clark. When they explored the Louisiana Territory, they brought these back to him as a gift. So on the White House South Lawn, he has two bear cubs sitting there. Yeah, there was no pets that I would ever have. This man loved everything French. If he was not a born American, I swear to you, this man would be French. He loved French wine. We talked about his wine cellar. He was upset when we decided to stay neutral and not help France during the French Revolution. He wanted, He was upset about it. So another thing, when he was over there being ambassador, he brought over ice cream and introduced it and made it popular in the Americas. So in my video, if you ever watched my James Madison one, we said that his favorite dessert at the White House was ice cream. It was probably introduced to him by the president just before him, Thomas Jefferson. He has the first recorded American recipe for ice cream in the United States. This man grew opium at Monticello. Opium, a.k.a. an opioid, a.k.a. a narcotic, which is illegal at the federal government level today. And when did they have it removed from Monticello? 1991. Listen to me again. 1991. Not 1791. Not 1891 1991 it was finally removed I know your opium plants were very historical for a long time but they're illegal man you gotta let them go we talked earlier about John Adams and Thomas Jefferson they have a very unique relationship throughout their history both of them were put on the document of Declaration of Independence to write it. They were side by side. They were good friends. They helped each other. When the presidency came, they became bitter rivals. They didn't like each other. They both had totally different views of how to run this country. But then they made amends after they were both out of the White House. So, without political stress, they're friends again. How many people do you know that can say the same thing? Just don't talk politics. But the crazy and sad thing is, July 4th, 50 years after the signing of the Declaration, both of them would die on the same day. Adams dies five hours after Thomas Jefferson, but he doesn't know this. It hasn't got word to him yet. So one of his last words is, Jefferson survives. Of course, Thomas Jefferson is not going to have anybody. He writes his stuff. He writes his documents. He doesn't like being rewritten. He doesn't like being criticized. He, If he writes it, that's how he wants it to be because he felt that's how it should be. His epitaph on his gravestone was going to be no different. He writes, Here was buried Thomas Jefferson. 
author of the Declaration of American Independence, of the Statue of Virginia of Religious Freedom, and father of the University of Virginia. He doesn't put on his gravestone that he was president. His second term was a nightmare in his mind. All the people who criticized him and did this and did that wrong, and he was miserable during his second term. So much that he did not want that put on his gravestone. He did not like being president, and he didn't want it to be there. Which is a sad thing that we do to our president sometimes. Sometimes we bog them down, not realizing, you know what, guess what, they're still men. A toast to Thomas Jefferson. This man, when I went over my top ten presidents list, he was close to my number ten. I was reading about it. I was debating putting him at number 10. Now, of course, doing your research, there were things that happened that I had to leave him out. And over the last two centuries, a man that was an icon in the American eye has really come under fire. And especially here today. But I say this. This man did write a document that not only is the basis for our American existence, it revolutionized the world. This man doubled our country with one purchase. Whether you think he it was right or wrong, it showed it panned out. This man sold his own personal library after the British burnt down the Library of Congress and now it is the cornerstone of what the Library of Congress is today. There's a reason why this man's face is on Mount Rushmore. This man is a pillar that held up America in the beginning when we really needed him. To Thomas Jefferson, you were monumental in my book. Happy birthday, Mr. President. (sighs) Now that's good history. And as I promised, this is a toast to G. Buttes. You beat the Jared Challenge. (sighs) You know your history. Wait, 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 before you go. I have my next Jared Challenge question. Going over my next honoree right here. My question is, this is the only president that was a lifelong bachelor, meaning he was never married throughout his life. If you know who it is and you're the first to get it, comment right here. And not only will I be toasting him, I will be toasting you on the show. Let's see who knows their history. 